and I'm so incredibly excited today because we are actually, I've had Italian on the mind and I was fortunate enough at the Wednesday Farmer's Market to come across two big zucchini and I said this is it, it's Italian uh, lunch, late lunch today. So we're going to have an Italian raw vegan bolognese and how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have our pasta that I spiraled with a spirulli spiralizer. If you want to know where to get it, go to my website and we have our pasta. I normally don't peel the zucchini, but this time I did because I wanted it to have the light color of the pasta. It has a lot of folate and vitamins and minerals in the zucchini. I also have purslane, which I went to the trouble of picking off all the leaves because I just love these little leaf shapes and I want them dispersed or thrown atop like confetti. It's purslane confetti. And the amazing thing about purslane is that it has such a high amount of omega-3 fatty acids which help our brain and our nervous system. So by all means, go ahead and use the stems in your smoothies and your soups. Very often I will chop up the purslane very fine and just mix it in in a massive healthy salad. But today it's going to be used like confetti. And uh, fats are important in case you were wondering. It's really important to have fats for our brain, for, our for everything. So don't be afraid of the healthy fats. So the, I'm going to introduce the components of this dish. So we have our pasta and our purslane. We're going to make a sauce, a red sauce. Then we're going to make a nut meat. No meat, not a critter was harmed during, during this process. But we're going to have uh, dehydrated almonds, some ground flax, some onions, some dates, some lemon juice, and sage. Sage is the thing that makes nuts or seeds taste like meat or have that kind of I would say meat remembrance. So um, I'll also use olive oil. My favorite is Nuvo, but we're, you'll see that in the picture. So we have also after that is I'd like to have the spaghetti, then the red sauce, then the meat, and then a dollop of a cream sauce. So we're going to do that with cashews. This is a cup of cashews that's been soaked and then rinsed and drained. And I'll use lemon juice to kind of give it like a it's, it, it gives it kind of like a sour uh, f feeling, flavor to it, water and salt. And at the top, we're going to garnish with, and all the herbs came from my garden, by the way, and that's always fun to just stop everything and go down to the garden and just stand there in the dirt and pick. So we have basil and oregano. Oregano is going in. So the next thing we're doing, I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce it, is, um, oh, and the equipment needed. Okay, so if you don't have a dry blade to grind the flax, you can go ahead and do it in a coffee grinder. Fresh is best way to have flax. If you can't and don't have that, then go ahead and buy the ground flax. And we need, I love my Nutribullet. I will make the cashew cream and the red sauce in the Nutribullet. And then to finally pulse the no meat, um, there's gotta be a better way to describe that. Um, to to have it in here with the um, sage and so there's a little bit of equipment could it all be done by hand absolutely I could take the almonds and crush them in um, my mortar and pestle I could do all of this by hand except the sauces so we have cherry tomatoes that I got at the farmers market and we want garlic in this one so I'm using um, I, when you're using raw garlic, you want to be a little careful. So just a little, um, it's like a third of a large clove. I'm putting in dates because that helps balance out the flavor. We definitely want onion in here. And the recipe, I think, is actually going to be below. Now, a lot of times when you make, um, this is about two cups of cherry tomatoes. I might use the whole thing, but I'm going to go ahead and blend it and then add. Um, when you want to make a really like tomato sauce, oftentimes uh, chefs will seed the tomatoes, take out the watery part, but since these are cherry tomatoes, it's okay to leave them as is. It's just you just wouldn't want your sauce too watery. That's the point of seeding. So we're okay with that. We're also going to add some density, uh, density of flavor uh, with sun-dried tomato powder, which you get from Frontier Organics. And so um, this might be probably a quarter of a cup. And I will use salt, and that will probably be half a teaspoon, and I can always add. 
And remember that your tomatoes might be saltier than mine, so it doesn't matter how much salt I say to use because you might need more or less. More or less tomatoes, so get used to flavor. Ah, oh, I'm missing the lemon. The lemon juice, which is the juice of one lemon, I believe. A little bit of olive oil, so two tablespoons. We could add more if we want. Okay. There's an ingredient missing. It's the oregano from the garden. Putting it in. Maybe that, not that part of this. <laughs> I think the leaves that would be better. Like putting the whole stem in, which is fine, it will blend it, but <laughs> it's all right. I already know it's good. Like, I don't need to taste it again. So we got the pasta, we have the sauce. Next up, we are going to make, and this is the funny part. This is gonna be the interesting part because I've never done it quite this way, but we're all pioneers when it comes to raw food because raw food changes like every minute. It's, it's up to what you come up with. So you can be a pioneer. And that's why I'm making this up as we go. So I will measure for you guys how many soaked almonds. Um, This is one cup. I'm gonna make two cups of it because, um, because I like to have extra. I like to have extra and it goes so fast. How long will this dish last? To me, it doesn't matter because it doesn't last very long. The zucchini noodles you can keep in a Debbie green bag from Bed Bath & Beyond or Whole Foods. They will last for five or six days after they're spiraled. Um, the sauce will last five days. The nut meat will last up probably like four days. And so, but once it's all mixed, eat it right away. So these are sticky because these are my candied almonds. That's what I have, so you use what you have. Um, but by all means, no flavor is needed on these. I have to rinse. Now we're going to put in half of an onion. I wasn't gonna do that. I did it. I was gonna leave the onions and fold them in, but they're in. If you're making that, if you're gonna make it, go ahead and put in, grind, pulse the almonds. Taking them out. You know why? I'm gonna take most of them out because you really have to pulse the almonds a lot. Um, and I don't want all of the onions to be mushy in there. So big deal, I'll take out some of them. And then I'll fold in extra. And therein lies mistake number two. I think I've reached my quota. Okay, so that's fine. And we have a, uh, the juice of one lemon. And we're going to put in one really large medjool date and then I can always add. Um, we were, are going to need a couple teaspoons of salt. And we put the sage in, the sage is going in. The sage is what makes it taste like meat. And that's it. And then we pulse it and we see what we need to add. Black pepper is good too. This is great. It's great. So I don't know if I need all of this flax. This is two cups of brown flax. Um, we're gonna have the recipe below because we're gonna figure out exactly what worked. So don't despair. So I'm gonna just put this will help it bind, so I'm going to put a half a cup of brown flax and see how that goes. And it may need more, but we'll see. I'm throwing in two tomatoes. I'm shocked and delighted. It's perfect. I just need to taste it. Still shocked and delighted. <laughs> really happy. Um, Wow, I'm gonna blend it a little more and it needs, <laughs> Lisa's here filming with me. Let's decide what it needs so we get this recipe perfect. It's so nice, this is Lisa. Hi. Hi. So she's the reason you're seeing the food close up and the pictures are getting prettier on Instagram and everything, it's like having help so we, Mm, it's a little sweet. It's good salt. It's good sweet. It might need the acid, like um, oh, lemon. More lemon yeah. Yes. Mm 
and pepper, black pepper. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll find it. So that's Lisa, and guess what? We're going to Paris. We are going to Paris to show more, to have fun, and pictures, and videos, and raw travels with Dara, and Lisa's going to take the pictures and videotape, and we're going to have so much fun. So I'll be there the 8th through the 15th, but the weekend, the 10th and the 11th, the Saturday and the Sunday, if anybody wants to meet us, we'll start making plans now, and all later I will announce exactly where. So exciting. So Lisa, anything you want to say? What about that piece of trivia? Oh my God, that's so important. No, that's so weird. No, no, you come here. No, no, the reason it's so important is because I'm actually making, are you in camera? I want to make sure you're in. Okay, earlier today, she's like, I watched this documentary and do you know how many gallons of water you use for one hamburger? And I'm like, I would say that on camera if I could remember the numbers. But at this point, I just thought of it. While it's so, why it's so great to make a nut meat, because it's good for the environment. Yes. <laughs> do you remember the, do you remember yes, the number? Yes, it's 660 gallons of water, and that's crazy. Per hamburger. Per one hamburger. Per one hamburger. And I wish I remember the name of <laughs> you know, Leonardo the name. DiCaprio's on the cover. He's like behind Well, you it. know what? She'll probably think of it later and yeah. post it below the video. But yeah. how cool is it that I thought of that while we're I making know. Thank you. beef? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you on so many levels. Yeah. <laughs> see, when you look at my Instagram, you can see, go scroll all the way down and then see how I got better. You definitely need a spatula when you, you have to like mix it. Sometimes it's hard, it gets stuck, so you just kind of mix it up. If it gets too stuck, then you go ahead and add some liquid. And we are adding lemon juice. So I'm going to say half a lemon. So that's one and a half. It's a great texture though. Do you want to try it? I'd love to. Mm. It's great, right? It's perfect, right? It's I delicious. think we put it in a bowl with so that, good. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Come. Stay, stay. <laughs> stay, huh? Okay. I'm so happy to be doing this with Lisa. You could probably tell from my mood. <laughs> I'm up to the cashew cream. Well, Lisa's going to mix. You can mix that one with this, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to go ahead and make the cashews. So we have one cup cashews. And the really cool thing about them is you don't need to soak them if you don't have time. So everything here is really of the moment. If you had to use um, almonds that um, were soaked but not dehydrated, it's okay. Just know that that will be your water content in the nut meat. So I'm going to use, oh, Lisa normally writes the recipe <laughs> when she's here doing something else. So I'm going to use half a <laughs> Okay, so we have, so we're out of lemons because I used extra lemons for everything else. So I'm going to use some uh, more lemons. But here's the funny thing is that you can have the best planned video and think you're going to make it in 10 minutes, but it doesn't always happen that way. <laughs> It's fun, and we get to do this because no one's yelling at us to not do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's no sponsor saying, wait, you went too long, or some executive saying, you can't do that or say that. You can't say that about a hamburger. You know what I mean? Like, that's part of the beauty. Well, it's true. So this is one whole lemon, and that's good. So now we have um, the lemon juice, water, and cashews, and we need a couple pinches of salt, but I'd say... A quarter teaspoon. You can always add more. And that's how easy it is to make a cashew cream. Wow, that looks good. Wow. Looks so good. It oh looks my gosh. Kind of it looks real. Yeah. <laughs> it's so real. <laughs> Show them wait. It's so crazy. Oh it, photo. No, okay. seriously, it's so it's weird. Mm. I'd say more lemon, shockingly enough. So it's a lemon and a half. And it's perfect. I'm so excited to plate. Um, that means everything's done. The pasta, the red bolognese sauce, and a little just dollop of cream. And then we're going to put the herbs on top. Some basil, some oregano, little pieces of sage, which I will chop up right now. You want to taste it? It looks so good. I know, it's crazy. That's crazy. It's so good. <laughs> okay, 
guys. So this is how easy. Sometimes you, what you want to do actually is you want to cut the pasta in half because it's very long. I usually cut it in quarters. Okay, so we're going to put some pasta here. I don't know anyone that wouldn't want to eat this, really. Uh, it's just going to be so... So we have choices here. We could try it on camera, but then we won't have the proper photograph. So maybe we try one mm -hmm. and photograph the other. Mm -hmm. Okay. So beautiful. You could have a Brazil nut parmesan. I have a recipe on the channel for that. This doesn't need the cream really, but too late now. The basil. So now we are going to mix it up like crazy and try it. Here. <laughs> To tell the truth, of course. You're but saying, I already know it's good, right. so that's true. Oh my god, mm -hmm. so good! So good, crazy. <laughs> wow, well More done. Salt. Okay, well done. Get your brains out, everybody. We're going to eat lunch. <laughs> okay, everybody, we were plating. Lisa was taking photographs. It's gorgeous. It's delicious. And I thought, you know, it needs a Parmesan. So I can quickly take a handful of Brazil nuts, um, a scoop, a very large couple of tablespoons of nutritional yeast, and some garlic powder. So easy to make a little cheesy topping. Oh, it's probably a quarter of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of garlic. And I'll do a couple, two, three pinches of salt. You can always add more. And in my little friend, my mini Cuisinart food prep, I will pulse. Ideally, we are using, I'm using another handful of Brazil nuts. Ideally, we're using pine nuts. I don't have any. I only want organic pine nuts, not the ones from China that we don't know are organic. There's a more traditional way of making Parmesan uh, cheese uh, that I learned at Living Light Institute that you um, do pine nuts and you make it liquidy, then you spread it out on a Teflex and it dries and then it's in Parmesan slices and it's fantastic. But this is going to give us our quick and easy cheesy topping. Okay, bon appetit. <laughs>